Come on, everyone. Bomberman Brothers, let's go! Last week, Super Bomberman R for Nintendo Switch received a brand new patch, which in addition to adding a whole slew of new options, boasted something rather unexpected, an increased frame rate. With reports from players quickly suggesting that the frame rate was bumped from 30 FPS to a full 60 FPS. Now, that is a pretty significant jump, so we couldn't not check it out of course, so I ran out, grabbed a copy of the game, and decided to find out for myself. Did they really hit 60 frames per second here? And at what cost do these improvements come? Let's jump in. Now, Bomberman R was one of the few retail Switch games available alongside the console back in March, and it was moderately well received. It was also clearly a game with a rather meager budget behind it, but at the same time with ex-Hudson employees, the original creators of Bomberman, working on the game, I had some hope. But it didn't quite make the cut. A high difficulty level, a limited selection of options, some camera quirks, and of course a frame rate that was half of virtually every other Bomberman game kept Bomberman R from really standing out. Despite this, the game was a success and Konami has decided to support it long term. Each patch has offered a host of improvements and tweaks, but version 1.3 really takes the cake. You get new camera options, improved controls, less latency when playing online, actual difficulty settings for battle mode, and the promised frame rate improvements. So straight off the game card, this is what you're looking at. Without any patches installed, and when docked, the game runs at a full 1080p at 30 frames per second across all the various play modes. Whether you're playing with 8 players in battle mode, or tackling the game's story, you're going to get the same 30fps frame rate. It looks fine, but definitely feels less responsive than a typical Bomberman game due both to the lower frame rate and slightly laggy controls. So up through version 1.2, this is basically how the game played. Now, I don't have footage of it here, but when played in portable mode then, the game would drop down to a native 720p at 30fps, offering the same basic experience, but in mobile form. But once you install version 1.3 then, we do see an immediate jump. And yeah, it's true, the game now runs at 60 frames per second, and it feels so much more responsive than before. Right off the bat, I immediately found the game much more fun to play, and more appealing as a result. Sure, in other genres, 30fps definitely gets the job done, but in a game like Bomberman, the extra response you get from running at 60fps makes a huge difference. Now, this type of dramatic improvement is pretty rare, but in knowing that Hexadrive contributed to the game's development, it starts to make some sense. This was the studio that completely salvaged Zone of the Enders 2 HD a few years back after all. Hexadrive has a pretty good track record. So how did they manage to push a 30 frames per second Unity game up to 60 frames per second on the Switch then? Well it's simple, they dropped the resolution. Super Bomberman R goes from a native 1080p in its original form to 720p docked when using version 1.3. This is a massive drop in resolution for sure, but let's face it, frame rate is far more important in a game like this, so I feel that the development team made the right call here. But it's not that clean cut. These changes really only apply to the battle mode. When playing the story mode, the game retains its original 1080p output, but removes the frame rate cap. So as a result, the story mode now runs with a less stable but overall higher level of performance. Now the story mode is a little different from the normal battle mode and does tend to feature much larger maps with more on-screen AI running around. So why the difference here? Well, I would have preferred a higher frame rate with a lower resolution, but it's entirely possible that there are additional bottlenecks in the story mode that we don't really know about. After all, the maps in this mode are a lot larger and there are more enemies on screen at any one time. It's entirely possible that dropping all the way to 720p wasn't enough to get it up to a full 60fps, so it was decided to simply stay with 1080p with an uncapped frame rate instead. But that's just a guess, only the developer can say for sure here. But that isn't the only change. When playing in portable mode, we see similar results. The battle mode now goes from 720p at 30fps in its original form to 960 by 540 at 60 frames per second. 
while of course the story mode retains its native 720p image with an unlocked frame rate. So basically, we're looking at much faster performance overall at the expense of image quality here. Perhaps the best solution here would have been to include an option in the menu allowing users to toggle between a higher resolution or the higher frame rate. So while I'm all about the increased frame rate here, there are other users that might prefer a sharper image. But of course, if you can only pick one, I'm glad they went with frame rate. I also want to take a moment to praise the game's user interface. Even in its original form, the menu system operates at a native 1080p at 60 frames per second. It's fast, beautiful, and slick. Navigating through the game's various options just feels awesome as a result, and the artwork looks really nice too. It's a detail that's often forgotten when discussing games these days, but when done well, it can add a lot to the overall package. Overall then, it's interesting to see how Super Bomberman R has been transformed over time with these updates. The game started off decent enough for sure, but it is increasingly shaping up to become a great Bomberman experience. Looking back at the Bomberman series as a whole then, I'd have to say that Saturn Bomberman and Bomberman 94 on the PC Engine are still my go-to versions. Saturn Bomberman in particular is still an amazing game today with some of the most lovely pixel art around, tons of awesome modes, and a killer 10 player battle option. And while I prefer the 2D visuals of Saturn Bomberman, I have to say that when you start to compare them, Super Bomberman R does a pretty nice job of delivering a great Bomberman experience that doesn't feel that far off in terms of features. It's not quite as rich of a game for sure, but there's a lot to love here. And with version 1.3, Super Bomberman R manages to stand out as perhaps the best Bomberman game in quite some time. Well, okay, to be fair, it's no Bomberman Act Zero, but what is? Overall then, Bomberman R has become a great title for the Switch, thanks to excellent developer support. I wouldn't have guessed that Konami would be so keen on supporting one of its games like this, but consider me surprised and pleased. So if you've had an interest in this game for a while, but skipped out on it due to the less than positive reviews around launch, now might be the right time to jump in if you're itching for Bomberman, of course. But that's all we have for now. If you enjoyed this video, do be sure to give us a like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter. And of course, until next time, this is John, signing off.